all I need is you, baby, baby. What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Kia K5, courtesy of Fred Beans Kia in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in the new K5 because there has been a refreshed look both inside and out for 2025. Still got great styling in my personal opinion. We actually do have above average reliability as well according to consumer reports so you gotta love that you also get america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain so you can't beat that so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2025 k5 first one being the lxs starting at 26,990 gt line which is the one we were in today starting at 27,990 gt line all-wheel drive for 29,590 gt for 33,090 dollars and lastly the ex starting at 34,490 dollars but as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are a couple different power plants available for the k5 first one essentially is powering all of those trim levels but the gt so the one that we have today is powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected four cylinder, putting out 191 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels. And by the way, all wheel drive is available again for the GT line trim level only. Power being sent to the ground there through an eight speed automatic with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 37 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 24 city, 33 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then you got the GT trim level. And so for that GT trim level, the power plant is a little more powerful. That one is powered by 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. That one puts out 290 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 311 pound feet of torque coming in at right around 1,600 RPM. Power being sent to the front wheels through an eight speed wet dual clutch with paddle shifters on that one. Zero to 60 time, approximately 5.2 seconds. That's plenty impressive there. With MBG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 33. That's pretty impressive on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel yet again. That's pretty cool. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here, as we are sitting at this red light. Did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's a circular dial located just behind the shifter there. Those drive modes will include normal, sport, and my drive and snow for the GT trim level only. So adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity and the gauge colors as well. So that was pretty cool. So if I were to change it to sport driving mode, it gives you a bunch of red hues. Normal driving mode gives you a bunch of yellow. And I think all of them, all the rest of them are yellow actually. And you can actually make some green gauge colors up there as well. But we'll get more into that when I go over the gauges. But now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put this acceleration here to the test. And let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 K5 here up to speed. All right, you guys got it in sport driving mode now. I found her straight away in three, two, one, go. Ah, this wasn't that bad of an uh, initial get up and go there. I like that. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but it's certainly not bad. You shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway. Um, having said that, if you wanted more power, you got the GT trim level. But the thing I really liked about that engine is it's kind of zippy. That's a good way to describe it because since it's not turbocharged, there's no sort of any kind of delay at the beginning. So for zooming around city streets, even in this size of a vehicle, it's a little bigger sedan than your regular uh, Kia Forte or something like that. It's kind of zippy. So I kind of like it. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna keep saying it. I gotta shut up. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.2 inch solid rear disc. But that's for the non GT trim levels like we have today. If you were to go with that GT trim level with a more powerful engine, of course, that one actually bumps up the brake size. You get 13.6 inch ventilated front discs, 12.8 inch solid rear discs, and you get neon green brake calipers as well, which is pretty stinking cool. But anyway, 60 is your stopping distance, 127 feet, which on paper is not the best. I will say that typically you want to look for that lower 120 number. Sports and ands are in the one teens, so upper 120s is not the very best. But having said that, let's go ahead and do a quick little brake test here as far as braking feel goes. Braking feels fine. 
I love the braking feel. Although the number's not the best, the braking feel is pretty darn good. So I personally wouldn't have any issues with that. I'll just put it that way. But anywho, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. Uh, I certainly don't have any issues with that. As far as cabin noise goes, that's something that I kind of noticed originally. Like, I think they've gotten a heck of a lot better with their cabin noise. I remember back in the day, whenever I drove a Hyundai or a Kia or even Genesis, uh, I always had a little bit of wind noise at higher speeds. Now I think maybe because I've said it in my past videos, I don't know. Although I do know Kia watches my videos from time to time. They've gotten better, like a lot better, like a heck of a serene cabin here in the K5. I am driving right now and it's a pretty serene cabin. And maybe that's due in part because all trim levels now get an acoustic laminated front windshield and all trim levels but the LXS actually also get acoustic laminated front door glass and that is something that's typically an option even on luxury automakers so the fact that kia gave that to essentially all trim levels but that bottom trim level that's pretty darn impressive so they probably heard the constructive criticism in the past and they made that change to kind of make everyone happy and it's making me happy this is a luxury like uh, interior um sereneness i i'm horrible with words today <laughs> but you guys get what i'm saying but i will say in terms of steering feel it is a super loosey-goosey steering feel now i will say there is one way to combat that a couple ways actually if you put it in that sport driving mode it does give you a much heavier steering feel not the heaviest though it's still kind of on the looser side of things but i did want to also say there is that custom driving mode where um you can actually adjust that to just give you that heavy steering feel without the instant acceleration that you traditionally get with the sport driving mode that's probably what i would do and that's what i did on my old hyundai sonata as well so that's probably what I would recommend. But having said that, um, Kia, you can make the steering feel a little bit heavier if you want to. It's still a little bit on the looser side of things. But anywho, then touching on rear visibility, it's absolutely brilliant. Rear visibility is excellent on the Kia K5 with the shape of the sedan. You really shouldn't have any issues there. So you gotta love that. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 kia k5 all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 kia k5 finished in runway red in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name i think runway red looks dang good on the k5 if you ask me but as always let's go ahead and start with where the k5 is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter k indicating that the new k5 is built and assembled in korea so you gotta love that that's how it should be in my personal opinion but let's go ahead and start with actually what's new for the 2025 k5 you got new headlights and taillights you guys can kind of see this kind of a z-shaped design to those headlights in the corners there so that's definitely new for 2025 you do have some interior updates as well but i'll touch on those once we get to the interior portion of this review but anywho starting up front multi-reflector led headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board you do get led daytime running lights with those of course as well along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and the sense of the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there so gotta love that led fog lights coming on the gt line that we have today and the gt trim level what you guys are looking at right there a little bit of b-roll footage for you unique front fascia though also for the gt line and gt trim so you're going to get a little more aggressive of a look for our particular trim level compared to some of the other trims and you gotta love those hood creases pointing down to that kia logo that i believe was redesigned in 2022 if i remember correctly i do like that new logo still i'm still gonna say it's new because it didn't used to be that way but anyways gotta love that gloss black front lip there as well i think that looks good all the gloss black accents they could have left them a matte black like a lot of other manufacturers do especially in this particular price range and they didn't they put them in gloss black so that is a heck of a look there definitely paid attention to detail so very good looking front end kia i think you did dang good in my personal opinion i would actually say i think the k5 now looks better than the new hyundai sonata so 
Well done. That pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, you guys can see that chrome upper window trim. Yes, that does come standard. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored, power adjustable side mirrors. That's the standard setup, of course. For the GT trims like we have today, you're gonna get gloss black side mirrors. They will be heated though. You do get LED integrated turn signals on all trim levels, but the LXS, I wanted to mention that too. But then taking a look down at the wheel setup, they're gonna differ substantially depending upon the trim level of course 16 inch alloys for the lxs 18 inch alloys for the gt line trims and the ex and then 19 inch alloys actually for that gt trim level but very nice looking side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right you guys so here's the other part that was refreshed for 2025 is the back end and specifically the taillights i'll cover that in a second here but it's kind of like a rear duckbill spoiler a little bit Eh, not really maybe but I think it looks good nonetheless got the Kia logo of course redesigned taillights now this is something that kind of mimics the Lexus design to a certain extent now Lexus took out this top part a little bit further down the side but overall I think it's a dang good design I like the redesign of the taillights that Kia did with the K5 here so you got the badging back there the trim level badging I should say you got a little bit of a rear diffuser down there kind of in the center but the thing that I don't like about the K5 a little constructive criticism here is they kind of have almost this fake exhaust look so you guys can see to the corners there this kind of like this brushed bronze accents that kind of look like their exhaust outlets but if you look inside of those they're actually kind of filled in with plastic and to be fair a lot of automakers do do this but still not a huge fan but having said that there is a single exhaust outlet it is tucked away underneath on the passenger side there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the K5, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it actually is a hands-free smart trunk for every single trim level across the board. I had that in my Sonata. That was actually one of my favorite features of the Sonata. Essentially, when your car's locked up or whatever and you're walking up to the back of it, um, after me filming one of these reviews or something, I got all my camera gear with me. I simply just have to walk up and stand behind it for like three seconds. It's gonna beat three times and then it's gonna automatically open up for me without me ever having to take the keys out of my pocket or press any buttons or anything like that. So I love that feature. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space than if you needed it. But um, not a whole lot going on in the cargo area. We'll say if you lift up underneath of the cargo floor you will find a spare tire which i absolutely love and there's a good bit of space surrounding that spare tire you could probably throw an ice scraper around there or something like that too but anyways now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at 35.2 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard rear usb charging ports coming standard as well didn't expect to find that you gotta love that but here's the thing you only get rear ventilation if you go with the GT or the EX trim. So therefore, we don't have that with us here today. Unfortunately, that's kind of weird. I think they should have put rear ventilation on our GT line. But anywho, then make your way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable front seats for the LXS. 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar for all other trim levels, in case you're curious about that. Heated front seats for all trims but the LXS. Ventilated front seats for the EX. Memory settings for the EX. You're going to find cloth surfaces for the LXS and then Syntex seating for all other trim levels. And since we have the GT line, we got this cool GT line kind of uh, etched into the upper portion of the seat. So that looks pretty cool too. So overall, as far as seat comfort goes, I was actually surprised. It really wasn't that bad. It's perfectly fine, at least in my short little test drive here today. So for me, I don't have any issues. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels, but that bottom trim level, the LXS. And it will actually be heated for the GT line all wheel drive and the EX trim levels. So that's pretty cool. So I like the GT line kind of etched into the bottom portion. I like the flat bottom. That's a cool design element too. So overall, I don't have any issues with that. 
Now, let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. This has got to be a new key for 2025 because I do not remember this key. It's pretty darn cold. So all of your buttons essentially are located on the sides of the key. Let me start by saying that. You got lock all the way on the top, unlock the button, pop the rear trunk there. Your remote start is actually found on the flip side there. Uh, that comes standard, by the way, for all trim levels across the board. So you got to love that. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that black engine start button located just to the left of those climate control vents there. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, 4.2 inch display for all trim levels but the EX. However, that EX is going to give you a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which is optional on some of the other trims like we have today. So we do have that full 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and it's pretty darn cool. Cause like I told you guys, of course the gauge colors are going to change dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in, but there is also a way within the infotainment screen to adjust the gauge colors as well. So I can put it on like green here if I wanted to. So I thought that was pretty cool, but essentially there are steering wheel mounted controls. So you can kind of adjust everything that is on there. It gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your outside temperature, of course, uh, trip A, trip B, there's tire pressure information. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital gauges. They look pretty darn cool. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Panoramic sunroof for the GT and EX trim levels. Optional on our GT line that we have today. LED interior lighting for the GT and EX as well. Dual zone climate control does come standard for all trim levels across the board. You gotta love that. You're gonna find a wireless phone charger for all trims, but the LXS trim level. So that's pretty cool. I like seeing that just in front of the shifter there. And since I mentioned just in front of the shifter, got a little bit of storage there to the left of that wireless phone charger. You got a bunch of USB charging ports up there. There is a uh, 12 volt power outlet. That was kind of weird how you just press that in and it opened up. I don't think I've ever seen that design element before. To the right of the shifter, you got dual cup holders. Behind that, you got your heated steering wheel button, your drive modes, a little bit more storage. And within the center armrest, not a ton of storage, but it should be able to get the job done. But cool little design element on the doors here surrounding the um the power window buttons it's kind of like this little uh it's almost like a little gloss black grab handle <laughs> but i think it looks cool it kind of feels cool too uh just above the passenger side glove box it's very faint but there is some lines running through there it's a little design element there as well as far as speaker covers go they're black plastic wouldn't have minded if they finished those in like a i don't know a silver or something it just looks kind of cheap there in my personal opinion but i do like all the climate control setup it's all kind of digital i think that's a really cool look and the silver knobs on the uh the knobs to actually turn up and down the temperature that was a really nice finish there like i said the silver finishes really do make just the little bit of a difference that make the car a little bit better so overall it's not that bad a lot of gloss black finishes um some silver finishes a little design element above the passenger side glove box so it would be fine personally for me i'll just put it that way but so now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen you're going to find a 12.3 inch color touch screen display and yes that does come standard Standard, so you gotta love that. Bluetooth and audio streaming, of course, but you also get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for all trims. You gotta love that. Factory navigation system coming standard for all trims, but the LXS. Gotta love that as well. And there's actually a ton of stuff you could check out up here. There's your weather information, for example. That's pretty cool. You got your typical voice memo system that Kia and Hyundai do, so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date. I like that as well. Uh, there's some maintenance information, so quite a bit you can actually check out up there along with your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's actually two of them. You're going to find six speakers essentially for all trim levels but the EX. But I will say this next sound system, although it comes standard on the EX, it is available on the other trims and we do have it. But it's a 12 speaker Bose sound system. And yes, we got that as an option. I love it. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, that was ton of bass. Like that was bass overkill in the very best way possible. I'll put it that way. So yeah, plenty of clarity, plenty of bass. And it's from Bose. I had a Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 Coupe back in the day. It never failed me, never broke. Bose is an extremely reputable company, so it's a brilliant sound system for the K5. I'll just put it that way. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the K5 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Pretty high definition actually as well. I like it, but anyways, that as always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start with the best part. 
IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. It does not get any better than that. That's the highest rating available by IIHS. So great way to start there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag. You also have rear side impact airbags, which by the way, is like a six or $700 option on Mercedes and BMW. Fun fact there. Also in the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot collision avoidance assist, forward collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, front parking sensors. Let me tell you guys, I'm emphasizing this stuff because one, rear parking sensors typically doesn't come standard on the competition. Two, front parking sensors is usually an option on luxury automakers. So the fact that it comes standard on the K5 is nuts. Oh, anyways, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, and lane following assist then as well. So overall when it comes to my final thoughts very good looking sedan like i said i think i actually like the k5 now better than the redesigned sonata that's just my personal opinion i know design is subjective but that's just what i'm saying you also get america's best warranty you cannot beat that you also get the very best safety possibly available and ihs top safety big plus yet again you can't beat that so i like that the tech is really good as well i don't think you could beat the tech the fact that you could change the gauge colors now we'll say key if you're watching this it would be pretty darn cool if you could adjust the look of the gauges as well rather than just changing the colors so a lot of other automakers do this like volkswagen will do this in their volkswagen taos of course bmw and mercedes-benz will do this and i know nissan and mitsubishi do this so pretty much all the other manufacturers will change the look of the gauges and not just the colors so just something to keep in mind for the future also these speaker covers i know i'm being nitpicky but the matte black just doesn't do it for me i would probably finish that in silver maybe just like the uh the knobs here or if you really want to go all out make them aluminum like the luxury automakers that would really blow everyone away but anyways at least on the upper speakers here not necessarily on the lower door ones the other thing is rear ventilation i think should come standard on the gt line maybe not for the lxs but if i were to get this i want to make sure that my kids are staying comfortable in the back so rear ventilation is kind of something that i personally look for and sedans like this so that's just my personal opinion but anyways i'll just stop there let me know what you guys think of the k5 in the comment section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media stuff if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we've been doing here on this channel for like 10 years now do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold all I need is you, baby, baby.